on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Are We Recording? It's the young Rottweiler, Ethan Hamilton. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm Gage Sutton 007. And today we are joined again by the host of the Vibe with Monty podcast, our good friend Monty, to talk some football with us today. Monty, how are you doing, man? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. It could be better. But hey, man, I appreciate you guys having me on for sure. Hey, it could be better. It. What's going on, man? You, uh, the the inevitable, I'll answer for him. The inevitable is coming. <laughs> the inevitable is coming. I was gonna say, I mean, hey, hey this this football season is coming to an end pretty soon, and uh, it's looking, uh, it's looking like we've got a Shout clear, <laughs> almost triple crown champion, right? The first time in how many years? 99. In 99. Yeah, no- Nobody's gonna care about that. All they're gonna talk about is twenty three from now on. Hell no! Hell no! The dream dies, man. The dream hey, dies Lukaku, on Saturday. Hey, Jeko, hey, Lukaku, Latoro, please, please, just deliver, please, 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 carry on. <laughs> hey, man. It's, it's a sad time being a United fan, low key. I swear, but. I'm saying we're here for a good show. We're here for a good show. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure like, we've got a lot to talk about and you know, you guys can take it away. All right. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I guess we can start out with, oh, Gage, you want to start it off? No, no, no. Ethan, I was going to say, go ahead. This is, this is your, uh, your segment right here. <laughs> I say less. Well, uh, well, Monty, there's been so much going on in like the, the soccer world, especially in the past month with all the, the leagues in the world coming to an end, as well Ooh. as, just overall, the amount of money being invested into the sport of soccer. And one of the biggest news that we've seen is a lot of these European players, for example, Kareem Benzema and N'Golo mm-hmm. Kante, they're going to go be playing in Saudi Arabia for, for the mm-hmm. league over there. And they're basically doing a very good job. The Saudis are poaching these big name players that, that are so close to our heart. Like, bro, this is our childhood that they're taking over there. And, I just, and it's crazy. I guess I never thought of it like, that it would hit so close to home, you know, because I know we had like the Iniestas go over the over to Asia. We had Ronaldo go last year, but I didn't think it would be like this big of a wave come this fast. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I to... feel like I feel like quickly before you you say something, I think there's so many different factors why players are now moving out of Europe towards the end of their career. So like, I'm just interested to see if this is sustainable. But well, obviously, you know what I'm saying, we, we're going to get into it. Um, but it's definitely something that has raised a lot of eyebrows for sure. Yeah, because... Yeah, oh, Ethan, before you before you say anything, sorry, I just want to speak like on just the trajectory of like professional sports in Saudi as a whole. I mean, I know we're getting into the football aspect of it right now, but uh, I'm a pro wrestling fan and they just had one of their biggest events of the year in Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> and... It went great. They were actually talking about uh, Saudi Arabia buying WWE a while back, too. So, I mean, we're just seeing Saudi, uh, you know, really take like really take the next step in bringing these talents uh, over to their country. And I think it's it's working out really well for them. And Ethan, I think you can talk about it a little bit more from the football standpoint. But like you said, with the guys like Benzema and Ronaldo last year making their moves over there, um, like Monty said, it's just the question now is just how sustainable is it going to be? How, how long is this going to be? Um, how long are they going to be able to throw out these massive contracts to get these players over here? Because <laughs> it's a lot of money. They, they, they're throwing out bread. Cause for example, I know Monty, I can't speak for you, but me and Gage, neither one of us give a damn about golf. I'm sorry for all our golf viewers that we don't care about golf, but the big thing about golf that's been happening in the past two years is like, the, you have the PGA, the like the the established brand for golf, and then the Live Tour, which is like the the Saudi backed organization that they've been basically pumping money to get these golfers from PGA, like Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson and all these guys to come play in their league. And it's kind of been frowned upon the past two years, like for taking this blood money. Like if you were um, a PGA golfer that took this money, like they they wasn't rocking you with like that. It was like on some some Biggie Tupac stuff, like some gang stuff for real. Like they was not rocking with you. Like they was dissing each other in press conferences and everything. They're like, oh, those little golfers, yeah, they, they're not with us. Like we, they're not gonna golf on the same courses as us. Da 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 da. And PGA like saluted their like their golfers. Like, hey, thank you guys for standing up with us. But as big money does is right, right when you think loyalty, 
will get you somewhere in life from that aspect of an athlete. This week, it, they announced that basically PGA, like underneath the table, they were bought out by by the Live Tour completely. So all these PGA golfers that turned down all this money from from Live, or hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, they basically lost all that money because now Live owns PGA, and now the PGA and Live golfers are, are able to golf on the same courses together, mm-hmm. and nothing happens. So basically, the guys that signed up with Live, they got in early, got the extra bread for like a couple months, uh, uh, bad months of PR, and now the the higher ups of PGA took took the money from the Saudis and said peace <laughs> to the other golfers. I think that's the craziest <laughs> thing ever. I think it's, like. Like, I feel like it's so crazy because it's like, bro, imagine, like, because they talked about it for, like, in all the interviews they talked this week, like, a lot of the golfers, they were just so mad. Like, you could tell they, they were like, wow. They just felt so disappointed. Like, wow, we really stood up for y'all. And this is what y'all did behind our backs is make a deal with them and take the money after you you frowned upon it for us to ditch y'all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just insane. It's it's proving that money talks, the, the golden rule of money talks at the end it of the really day. Does. It really does. It really does. I think. I think one of the biggest things is like the culture. First of all, is different in golf than it is in like other sports. Because like, yeah, footballers here like they'll make a move for money, and all right, cool. They'll be like a maybe in the first couple of weeks, you might get like Twitter trolls and like, oh, you've gone for the money, and the media might hype it up. But it's it's kind of like uh, football's a short career. You're gonna protect your family. In the long run, no one really cares. Because right now. Like, remember, I don't know if you guys remember, like, Oscar from Chelsea went to China. When China was doing the whole, we're taking all the stars and we'll just give them, like, a shit ton of money. Like, that wasn't sustainable, but, like, you had, it's like, Oscar was was still young, emerging, going into his prime. And for him to leave Chelsea to go to China, and he came out and said, like, hey, like, I love Chelsea, but when you're offering me crazy money like that, and they're talking, like, hundreds of millions for like a guy that's not even worth that much normally anyways in like, europe he's uh, not like, worth that at all yeah no he he really isn't like and then obviously with the golf you have like a situation where the 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 associations the people that run these associations they're in it to make more money at the end of the day for themselves so it's if it comes down to like pj saying hey we're gonna they may not do this because of golf culture but like they can be like hey we're going to have multiple championships in a year, for example. We're going to, instead of having our prestigious one, we might have a couple more or we might have more invitationals or things like that. And it's similar in, like, football where, like, the Super League was a thing and then everyone shitted on it because it was a bad idea because of, oh, it's America, oh, my God, we're not happy with this and things like that. And then you wait for a turn around and be like, oh, but we're going to add a competition league. We're going to add, we're going to change up the Champions League and no one batted an eyelid. And at the end of the day, it makes more money for the associations. And who's worse off? The people that actually participate in the sport. So I know there's a little tangent here, but like going back to like Saudi money, I think I was I was listening, um, I, was, I saw a clip on TikTok. I think it was from the Joe Rogan podcast. And he said like, there's a reason why if you look at the richest men in the world, it's like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, no one touches these Saudi guys for real, like liquid cash. The amount of money that these guys have from pumping this oil and like like having like Newcastle, Man City, PSG, these country backed city, like state backed uh, teams. And now Saudi Arabia invested in like they did the boxing. They had a few boxing fights. So they had a boxing fight. They did the WWE, like, um, like Bro said. You have um, Ronaldo moving last year. You have Benzema moving this year. You have Kante moving this year. Like, Messi could have gone, but he's gone in MLS. Like, there's so many, like, things. And it makes you realise they got some different level money that, that no one has ever seen before. No one has seen this before. Like, Giannis tweeted out, hey, man, I just saw Benzema, Ronaldo, and Kante's move. <laughs> hey, I can be a goalie or whatever for for a couple of games. And I'm like, <laughs> bro, if NBA players are now looking and like, wow, like, football have has the money. Like, it's, it's a completely different ball game. Completely different ball game, for sure. Yeah, and I think it's just really encouraging as a whole to see, like, the uh, Middle East area grow. Because, I mean, we just had a very successful World Cup in Qatar, too. I mean, 
Um, I, I just think it's, it's great for the sport. Um, it's switching things up a little bit. And I mean, <laughs> hey, now we get to see some of these situations too, where we just had this with Messi. Messi had the option to go to Saudi Arabia and take a lot of that money as uh, Ethan lags out. <laughs> but uh, instead, <laughs> Messi decides to go and uh, join Inter Miami in the United States. And Monty, I just want to get your initial thoughts on that, man. What do you what do you think about this? And uh, are are you a fan of this move, or what, what do you think Messi was going like? What was going through Messi's head when he made this decision? I think I think it's a move that makes sense. I'll be real. Um, I like I don't know if you like. Uh, let's take it back to when Beckham moved to the galaxy like he was promised not only a shit ton of money but an ownership like they said hey we want mls to grow you're our global star that we brought in as a player and we want you to become an owner and now they're doing the exact same pattern with messi i also think because and i only found this out recently as well when i was um i was speaking to a few friends and i found out that MLS is sponsored, the league is sponsored by Adidas. Like Adidas provides all the equipment, all the shirt sponsors, um, the shirt manufacturing. And I thought that was quite like that was very different because obviously in Europe you have the different, like you have Nike, Adidas, Prima, Umbro. You have so many different types. So I'm like, okay. And it just makes sense that Messi's an Adidas athlete. He's gone to basically an Adidas league. He's promised ownership at the end of his playing time. Uh, 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 his own franchise um, Apple TV he gets his own profits mm-hmm. you know like he gets the profits from his shirt sales like this is really like groundbreaking things and I'm like he got offered a billion like, a similar offer to Benzema but obviously the money was a billion got offered a billion dollars and the, uh, the Saudis were like pick your team pick your city go wherever you want we will cater everything for you and he was like hmm I hear that, but I, it makes more sense to go to the US because I get that billion over time rather it than rather it once. being like all in once. Do you get it? And he makes more wealth in the long run because, like, if he's having an ownership, if he has his own MLS franchise, like, hey, imagine that's, you're you're in the that's pr- like, they're that's, printing that's, money. That's, that's they're... money exactly, exactly. Imagine you're a college player and you get drafted to play in Messi's team Ex- or you're trans. Like, bro. Like, exactly. You know how, ins- like, thank you that you said it because I feel like it's very similar in in, in the long haul of what the money is going to be like for both mm-hmm. those decisions. But I feel like Messi, the reason why Messi opted towards the MLS is because of control. He wanted control over what the rest of his career is going to look like, even outside mm-hmm. of soccer, you know? And I think he's learning from all these other athletes across the world, like LeBron with the production company, how that's similar to the lane of how LeBron is going to maybe get into ownership when he's done or with Tom Brady, how the whole move to go to Tampa in reality was, he was supposed to go to Miami, but that the move to go to Florida was to get ownership stake. And now he's a minority owner in the Raiders. You could see the thought process with Messi. And even in his interview, like with talking about Barcelona, he was just like, they had a lot of stuff there that I couldn't control. Like I can't control like when I'm going to get registered. I, I can't control the players that are going to be on the team because now if I join, they got to kick some of the players off the team. And I don't want to be the reason why some of these guys got to leave. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in MLS, it's just like everybody knows Messi's the guy because I think we can all agree Messi's still very much good enough to play in Europe for at least another year or two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. to, To get him in his prime, not prime, but to get whatever's left of him to put that in MLS, even showcase that for whoever, how much longer he plays, probably like, we'll say 18 months he plays in the MLS. Mm -hmm. That is big money. And then to be able to pull money, like you said, it's basically an uh, Adidas deal. He's able to get the money from his own shirt sales, get the Mm -hmm. money from the entire league's like revenue, TV streaming. Yeah, TV. Yeah, it's insane to me. And and hold on, let's let's just keep in mind too, with all that in mind, Messi's coming to the United States. a country where, I mean, let, let's be honest here. Football is, we call it soccer for a reason. We have American football. But with Messi coming here, I mean, I think we could see a huge growth in popularity. And it's going to be so accessible to people on Apple TV. 100%. The revenue streams are going to go fucking because, crazy. Because it's basic, It's a play for the, the World Cup is in 2026. Like yep. it's, a, it's a three-year play. Bro, this, it's, this deal 
this deal, like, like we'll touch on the Saudis afterwards, right? And there's a there's a pattern, and the pattern is these countries are hosting a World Cup or want to host a World Cup because they saw Qatar, a country that no one cared about before the World Cup, a, a country that no one even knew too too much about, like their, their general knowledge, and they've just seen them showcase one of the greatest tournaments like in history. And now it's like, oh my God, look what happened to them. I want some of that as well. Okay, so now the World Cup, the next World Cup is in North America. Canada, US, Mexico. It, whilst Messi's at Inter Miami, the World Cup will be, being, will be played over there. Like, imagine, he'll become an ambassador. Like, like look at... Exactly. Um, like, look at, like, um, when now Benzema's in the Saudi League. He, Saudi Arabia won the 2030 World Cup. He will be, then become the face of the World Cup. Same way... You know, like other players take the ambassadorial role towards the end of their careers. Like this move for Messi, it just made way more sense. Way more sense. Like he's going to a region in the United States where Spanish is heavily spoken. Like, you know, like the weather, like you also have to understand, like with these South American players, like a lot of it is climate, familiarity, like I want a bit of home, you know? Yes. And when mm-hmm. you have that, if you have that in Miami, you have the option to have that and you have the Miami lifestyle you have you have all these factors and then you have David Beckham announcing that they're planning to um, renovate the stadium they want a complete overhaul because right now I'm not going to lie it's a shithole like, what, oh, what? they're the worst team in the MLS but the thing is is that we know the minute he gets there it's going to go up a level it's players, gonna go... players players don't care about MLS but players will move to into Miami just so that they can play with Messi that will happen. And now that Messi's gone to, into Miami, I'll expect Di Maria to follow shortly. I might expect another player to follow shortly. So now you've, you've built the calibre up. You're now going to have, like, the, the, the like now younger players going up the academy, the college system. They want to go to into Miami now because they're seeing their idol in their home hey, country. I want to play for This This might exactly. raise the entire American game. Like, I mean, 100%. like, we might Messi see just whole. a huge increase in just like the actual quality of the product too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. More people even... will take note for sure. More yeah. people. Will yeah, take because that. if you think as far as like the MLS, like I follow the MLS very like uh, surface level. Like I'm FC Dallas is my team. I'm from Dallas, but as far as like uh, com- the competitive league, like it's cool. It doesn't compare to the top five leagues in Europe. It doesn't compare to the South American leagues, even. Like some of the smaller, the uh, smaller leagues in Europe that aren't in the Premier League or Syria, even the even other the Mexican leagues, league. Like, like, exactly. <laughs> well, but what I'm saying is, like, the U.S. had young stars. Like they had Alfonso Davis. They have now the Argentine. Uh, t- what's his name? Thiago Almeida, right? He plays for Atlanta Almeida, United. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But now with Messi coming, there is more chances for get those guys like Almeida and Alfonso Davis and all these guys to come play when they're young, especially. That's the key thing. Now that they're getting these older players to come, you need the young players to come. Yeah, yeah. And I think the difference as well is like MLS, with no disrespect, has always been seen as a retirement home. We've mm-hmm. had the likes of Lampard, Gerard, Pelo, Villa. We can go on, right? Ashley Cole. All these players right at the yeah, end just of recently their Gareth Bale too. We just saw yeah, Gareth too. Bale for us for a small stint. Like all these players have just come, quick payday, you know, bag a couple goals, look decent, and then just say goodbye to the game. And now Messi may do that, but then you've now brought the greatest player of our sport to your country. The difference is that when you bring a Lampard, a, a a Gerard, and all these type of players. They are world class legends, right? But no one has Messi status. Like no one, like a normal day to day American wouldn't know who Frank Lampard is. A normal day to day American wouldn't know who who certain other players are, like uh, like David Villa Kaka. and stuff like that. But now you brought a casual. They know Messi. Everyone mm-hmm. knows Messi. So now you're like, oh, and then you're gonna have like, I saw a um, a thread on Twitter, and it was so funny to see. And, like, you saw, like, the American casuals that normally watch NFL and NBA, they saw those, like, they're like, oh, like, Messi's coming over. Like, what does that mean? Can someone explain in, like, NBA terms or NFL terms? <laughs> and then someone put, it's like LeBron James going joining uh, the Shanghai Sharks. That's really what it is. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, hey, man. I was like, hey. It's true, but, like, the difference is, like, you're now going to a country that 
football or soccer, like it will elevate because now you have the presence of a goat. Like you have the presence of the greatest of all time, basically. And uh, like if the sport doesn't, if this doesn't help MLS football, and then I don't know. I honestly, I hey, give it up, man. <laughs> you, you know, you know. I had a que- I had a question for y'all. Um, how much do you think Pele going to play for the New York Cosmos and Messi doing his research on that Ooh. played a part? Because that's the I think the the biggest similarity. Because with Pele going to play for the New York Cosmos, that made the MLS a thing. That's what gave it the biggest boom. That's what made it a league. That's what made, made Americans care about soccer in the U.S. at the beginning. And I think this could have a similar power or similar impact that that did. Because I think the goal with the MLS with this is not necessarily to get it to the standard of a Premier League, a La Liga, a Serie A. They need to separate themselves from the Saudi League, the Chinese Super League, at Liga MX. They need to separate themselves from those three, like leagues as as being seen as a retirement home and being mm-hmm. seen as like a competitive league maybe in the tier of the south american leagues or, mm-hmm. or the or like the championship or something like that i think that yeah, needs to yeah. be their goal i think i think when we speak about so your point with like Pele going to the cosmos it's like i don't think i could be wrong but i very much doubt messi was thinking about that but as an analyst you can look at the comparisons that one may draw and like the effect Pele had when he went to America compared to the effect Messi will have like completely two different eras don't get me wrong like it's like football was completely different back then to what it is now like football right now like honestly back then the you also have to understand back then the Brazilian league was what it was like that was the staple that was you know those winning most of the World Cups at the time like that was the level now obviously he's gone to Europe and we look at Messi coming from Europe to America, and I can see where the similarities may be. I don't think he was thinking about it to say, but I do get like the comparison, and it may have a similar effect. Like MLS need to make sure they use this as a way to progress. The only problem they have is a few thousand miles on the other side of the world in the Middle East. They are also trying to do the same. If we're being real, Saudi Arabia don't want to be seen as a retirement home. They don't want to be seen as a, hey, come get a payday, you know? They might have the ability to give a payday, but they don't want mercenaries. They want people that generally want to play in Saudi Arabia. So the MLS are now Saudi League are at battle because Saudi League have Ronaldo, Benzema, Kante. MLS has Messi, Di Maria, and whoever may join afterwards. So, like, we're now going to see, like a, like, a subdivision. Like, the Chinese League, it had its heyday. It had its fun. They, the Chinese people people in China was actually disappointed because they didn't want players from Europe to come to or South America to come to China just to get money and then leave. Like they didn't want that. So they changed everything, right? So what we know as the Chinese League Chinese League from before is different now. But Saudi Arabia and the United States, like even if we want to take it far, like politically, it's it's there's tension and there's like they want one wants to be better than the other. So now like you have now in a in a in a sports sense, you have the two goats in both countries. One has a World Cup, one wants to have a World Cup. Like like the twenty twenty six World Cup is over there. They want mm-hmm. the twenty thirty one, and we're gonna see this competitive battle to see like like what is going on. Because for me, I generally like where it's going. Like I think it's good for the game. I do think that the money is is ridiculous. Like I can't lie. Like I said, hey man, like there's there comes a time where like before the name of transfer, for example, like football wasn't that bad. Like the record transfer was only like 80, 90 million like at the time and only two players ever got that, like, you know, but like now we're talking we're talking crazy. Two hundred or three hundred <laughs> million like one bit like fuck man. Yeah. It's hey, crazy. I mean I, I think like you said, the the growth is all that really matters. Like we just want to see progress and everything and um, I think you alluded to it a little bit earlier, like when David Beckham first joined the MLS, I think that kind of gave them like that initial boost that they needed. Um, and I think this is just for the MLS to take the next step. Like this move was to bring Messi over here. And obviously, you know, it, it's going to be hard to overtake the NFL or the NBA in this country, but to just establish yourselves as one of the more um, just taken more seriously in the football community, 
I think that's all they really want, like you said, just to stop and being also thought of brings, as a retirement. It also, it also brings, like, ESPN, for example. I don't know if you – like, I like watching First Take, for example, you know, especially when they had um, – um, uh, what do you call it, Stephen A and uh, Max Kellerman. I like I like the little uh, differences between the pair of them. But I remember when, like, the Euros was going on. I remember when the walk was going on. Stephen A probably has no idea what football is. I don't blame him. <laughs> Making up his own idea of what football is in his head, trying to educate the American viewers, the average American viewers. And it was like, ah, oh, this stinks, man. Like, it, 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 case, it came off as unnatural. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, it was just forced. But then now that Messi has come, like, literally, like, today. No, not yeah. It, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. I, I, I saw the, them I have a the segment. I got, they had a segment. I saw the notification. ESPN was all over it. Like, like there was all over this coverage, and I was like, "This is, this is actually good because now when someone turns on their TV, oh, what's what's on ESPN, for example, and they see Messi going to Inter Miami, no one cares about MLS. But it's like, oh, Messi, like him, to Inter Miami, and then they look at the standings, like, oh, like they're rock bottom, or then it brings curiosity. People then to do their own research and figure out, oh, like why, and you know, I'm not saying everyone will. I think people just look at it and whatever and move on with their day. But you will start what it all it takes is a handful of people, and then that, that momentum will build. And now MLS, they can become it seriously. Now, when the season does start, for example, please, the play, I don't want to see the one thing I, I like I listen, I love when you know, I can't speak for anyone that's played the game at that level. Like I'm nowhere near that level and I will never be in that level. But it is kind of like weird when you're in the tunnel and players are asking for like, oh, can I have your shirt at the end of the game? Or can I take a picture with you? Or the referee asking for like, that kind of fan behaviour, like, like I saw it with when Ronaldo went to the Saudi league, the referee asked for a picture at the end of the game. He got his phone and I said, hey, can I get a selfie for you, with you, with my son? And like, it's cool. Like you got one of the goats. And of course, hey, if I was a referee, I would go up to either of them and say, hey, I want to take a picture. But I think it the, the competitive nature then, it doesn't seem as competitive because then, like, I'm scared that Inter Miami, for example, like, when teams play against Inter Miami and Messi's playing, I'm scared that they'll give him far too much respect. And, like, it's not as competitive because when he's in Europe, yes, he gets respect in Europe, for sure. Everyone loves him. But, like, it's also competitive. Like, he's, ha- he's having to work hard. Like, like, even at the World Cup final, he- remember when he got dispossessed, Kinsey Coleman, they switch the ball and Mbappe scores. Like they don't care. Like yes, you're messy, but like I've also got a job to do. I need to get the points on the board, and I'm kind of worried that like we we might see maybe in the beginning, not so much towards the end, but maybe in the beginning, you will have a couple players and a couple teams not really try as hard, they play up to an occasion, and like I don't know. I'm I am worried. I am kind of like the games might not be as entertaining as that like, one may say, but. In the future of MLS, it is definitely sustainable. It's a good move for Messi at the end of the day. I believe that this is going to be the most eyes Messi has ever had on him or her ever. Because now that he's going to be on the MLS stage, they're going to have, he's going to reach a whole new pinnacle. I think he's lagging out. Yeah, he's lagging out real bad. Are you, yeah, are you good? Me? You're still really... A little bit lagged. Yeah, you're lagging. A little lagging. bit lagged. Yeah, sorry, I apologize. We'll give it like a second for it to catch up. What I was going to say is like, I think this is the most as he's ever going to have in his career. Like, obviously we all recognize that that Messi is definitely a GOAT when it comes to this sport, right? And he's one of the greatest athletes that have ever played sports, period. But I think he has the opportunity to, I guess, separate himself into a different stratosphere as far as visibility that any athlete has ever had. Because we've had like Muhammad Ali, right? We, we've had Michael Jordan, LeBron, all these athletes that have able to separate themselves, not just from their sports, but from sports in general, like, oh, that's like an iconic person, not just an iconic athlete. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. And Messi has the ability to do that coming to America that he wouldn't have going to Saudi. Mm-hmm. Because I think he would be giving the sport to a country that never had it before, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? To a whole different strategy. Because I think when you have the, the marketing and entertainment industry behind you in America, it'll okay. be a whole different that's level. I, that's true. That's true. I, I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I, 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 I kind of, like, I, I see where you're going with that, Ethan, because, like, you're kind of right. Like, I feel like a lot of people in the United States don't love or respect soccer or football the same way that people in Saudi Arabia do. I think that's just the simple fact of it. And yeah. um, so by doing that, like I said, maybe we'll get more Americans who will actually care about soccer and stop treating it as a, oh, I only watch it every four years, more of a, I'm keeping up with the MLS. I'm keeping up with the English Premier League. I'm keeping up with everything that's going on in the world of soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree because I think to some degree, like you, like when um, Zlatan, for example, when Zlatan came to the like to the to the galaxy, like he was doing all these like uh, like talk show appearances and like he was like he was actually involved and embedded with he actually tried to be embedded within the American culture. The thing with Messi is like I think Ronaldo, for example, he would have been he would have been ideal for this like situation because he loves like appearing on these televisions and. He loves the spot. Like he's he speaks good English. Like he likes the media presence. The only difference is with Messi, he's a he doesn't seem as the media friendly kind of individual. Like he doesn't have that type of personality compared to like a Ronaldo or a Zlatan yeah. or a Beckham. So it'll be interesting to see how he adapts because naturally he will be like told hey, make some appearances. Like the, the, yeah, they're they're gonna you're gonna see him on not even like you're gonna see him on all these LA talk shows. Everything, at least for the, at the they're definitely going to try to put him in that at the beginning, and I yeah, think yeah, that's sure, going to be sure. the true test. Because you're right, like Ronaldo would be ideal with this. Because, like I said, he he spent a lot of time in England. His, his English is very well. Like he'd be perfect for appearing like on Jimmy Fallon or something like that. Yeah, Messi, yeah, on the yeah. other hand, he, he doesn't speak English. Like it's going to be definitely like an adjustment for sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But I think now that we've like spoken about Messi and his transition into the MLS. Seeing Benzema and obviously Kante got confirmed today that he's also going to Saudi Arabia. Like now, they are really trying to get all these stars, like coming to Saudi Arabia, and trying to boost their their league. Because if we're being totally honest, their league wasn't something to be like. No one cared about the Saudi Arabia league before Ronaldo, before these other stars started to come. So it was like, you know, now seeing Asia start have a like huge presence within football. And, Obviously, the money is a huge factor. Don't get me wrong. This is worth seeing money that I, like salaries and wages and transfer. Not much, so much transfer fees, but the salaries, the packages. Like, let me let me read out what um, Benzema's was included in this Benzema deal, right? Um, one thing to note: so, like the club didn't offer uh, Benzema the contract. The club didn't approach him. It was the league and the country. So already. We're talking like if a whole country is saying, "Hey, we want you," like it's not the club saying, "Hey, we want to sign that player, we want to bring him in." No, the league and the country. That's one thing that <laughs> that took me by surprise. Uh, first thing to note: no tax. He doesn't have to pay a penny of tax. Ooh. Zero tax. Yes. <laughs> so all the so all the money he gets, zero tax. Right. Uh, number two, one hundred percent image rights. So all when he when his face is plaid all over Jeddah, all over the airports, uh, all over like the billboards and every, everywhere in Saudi Arabia, advertisements, everything, all the money that he generates from his image rights, there's nothing that goes to the league, the club, wherever, he gets hundred percent of it. So that's one. That's, so that's two. Number three, pick a club and city where you want to stay, live, and play for. So Saudi Arabia have turned out and said, "Hey Benzema, Kareem, we want you. Pick wherever you want to play, whoever you want to play for, and pick where do you want to live. And <laughs> if you don't live in the same city as the club, we will personally take you to the training ground and back. Don't worry, we got you. Tra- travel, 
you don't have you got your drivers, you got you sorted. If you if you like you just pick wherever club and wherever country you want to live. And I was like, damn, for a whole league to say pick where you want to go, that is crazy. Never heard that one before. <laughs> Never heard that one before. Do you but, imagine the uh, NBA uh, doing something like that? Before go on. I said, could you imagine the NBA doing bro, something like that? Like bro. Joe Biden saying, hey, Victor Webanyama, you can play that, wherever you want. <laughs> you can play wherever you want. Imagine, dude. imagine. Nah, and I'll tell you what, Gage, I know you don't want to hear this, but Vic Stop it. would no, not no, have no, picked no, San no, Antonio. No. He would have not have picked San Antonio. He definitely would have picked San Antonio. Keep it in your heart. Like, ex- like I know, like keep it close because he's going to come in a month. But just know, if they gave him that choice... We would see him in in Madison Square Garden or in Staples. No way in hell he'd be. No way he, in, in hell he'd be in San Antonio. Uh, um, hey, San Antonio is nah, a beautiful city, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put some respect uh, on. <laughs> Put some respect uh, on my city, number, man. <laughs> uh, number four. Number four. Saudi Arabia will increase all commercial deals that he gets. So, for example, let's say he has like. I don't know, for argument's sake, he has like five commercial deals. Saudi Arabia will add like an extra 10, 20. They will maximize the amount of deals he has. So they'll give him as much as they can, right? That's another one. Uh, this one for me, I, I was like, hey, man, this makes no sense. And I'll say it right now. Number five, he can have any luxury he wants. What do you mean he wants luxury? He already has it. What do you mean? Like, oh, was that, huh? I, mm, I, I, I don't know really want to say it, but yeah. I think we know what that <laughs> I means. Think we know I, what I'm not going to really want to say it, but I think I think Benzema will realize what luxury means as soon as he gets there. <laughs> <laughs> luxury will be waiting for him on the airplane and at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and then lastly, but not least, it is a two-year deal. So... Yeah, they are the details of his his deal at um in in the Saudi Arabia league, um. But hey, and they signed Kante as well. Um, let me. I'm happy for Kante though. Kante, Kante, the, Kante deserves this. He deserves this. 100%. This is the move that Kante needed to do, and and yeah, it's rumored yeah. that that after the Champions League, they're gonna be trying to negotiate with Mares to do the same thing. Yeah, hey, but Mares deserves it too. The Leicester boys go to Saudi. Who'd ever thought? Whoever thought, not me. <laughs> I, I bet Vardy's sitting in the championship right now, sick to his stomach. <laughs> hey man, I'm not gonna lie, but um, where is Kante? Ah, oh, here it is. Here it is. So I have the details of Kante's deal right here, and we, uh oh, you're gonna, you know what? Yeah, this isn't as like crazy as um, what's his name, Benzema's deal. However, this is certainly like, it's certainly a big one. So, a uh, medical test was complete in London. It is a two-year deal with an option for another season, so a potential third. He will have 100 million euros per season, which comes around 120 million pound, uh, dollars around that ballpark. So, hey, it's over 100 million dollars anyway. So, per season. This includes, very similar to Benzema, image rights is his. Uh, commercial deals will go to him and creative portfolio I don't know I don't know what the hell that shit means but hey but um, yeah it's, uh, N'Golo Kante going to the same club as Benjamin so that's, ins- that's insane I know I know we're all going to be at the edge of our seat I I know me and Gage are especially when he comes to Miami I, I, I told Gage I was trying to look for those Miami FC Dallas tickets the minute the minute I popped out oh my goodness I was so sad to see they don't play him the, the rest of the, the year I was like alright next year I'll be ready the minute those tickets go on sale I'm gonna be there I'm sorry and I will be there with you yeah. Ethan. I will be there. <laughs> hey man hey listen watching Messi live is a privilege now he's in your country go watch him man go watch one of the goats of all time in all sports come to your country go watch it Go enjoy it. Listen, when he was in London, bro, like, every time he touched the ball, yeah, there's just something about it. Like, everyone got up. Everyone, everybody everybody like, gets up. You saw him at the Fina Guzman, right, when they played Italy, right? 
Yeah, yeah, the finalissima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That bro. must have been. Oh my god! I saw him one bro. time. They played in Mexico and just a friendly. And my mom still has the picture somewhere in his house. But there's a picture of him and all the Argentinian boys taking a like taking videos at uh what's it called of AT and T Stadium. And I remember we watched him. And keep in mind, like Texas. It's very much a soccer state. If there's a state that's going to be very much about soccer, it's Texas, and especially about the Mexican national team. That whole stadium was green. There was no light. Only me and my family was the light blue section. But I tell you, the minute him he touched the ball, the whole stadium stood up. It, it went quiet. Oh, one hundred, bro. The Argen, you know, the Argentina fans. Yeah, they for me, like it was like a, it was like a awakening. Like I, I've never. Hey, I've never been to Argentina. No other. There's no reason for Argentina like fans of the national team to come to the UK or to London unless they're playing, right? So when they played in the finalissima, like bro, the streets of Northwest London where Wembley is was just packed. It's like a sea of light blue, and they're all chanting in Spanish. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> bro, I have no clue what they're saying. I'm just there for the vibes. And then in the stadium, bro. I felt like I was in Buenos Aires, brand. Like it was, bro. The entire stadium. I didn't see a single. Like maybe, maybe what? Wembley's what ninety thousand. So maybe a good three thousand was Italy. The rest of the stadium, bro, light blue, chanting the entire game. When Messi assisted the first goal, when he went on his little dribble, bro. Oh my god! I was like, I am so grateful. <laughs> I'm just, like I was so grateful. I was like, yeah. Now you guys have to do it. He's in. He's in Miami. When he plays your teams, hey, go watch him. I'm telling you, I've already started talking to my boys that only, they don't watch soccer, they only watch basketball and football. And they're like, oh, yeah, we should go hit up a game. And I'm trying to tell them, you guys don't know what it's going to be when, when he shows us the town. Mm. I just hope, I just hope they really get, like, once they see, like, I don't want to, I don't want to see Messi in that shit all. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's a disrespect, Loki, man. Come on. He's <laughs> playing like a fifteen to 20,000 capacity stadium, bro. That's like Bournemouth. You're playing for Bournemouth. Come on, man. Bro, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm telling you, now that David Beckham got him, what he's going to do to those sponsorships, ooh, he's going to milk it for everything he got. He's like, all right, now that I got Messi in Miami, this stadium cannot do. In six months, Whoa. I better have something the size of, what's it called, Hard Rock Stadium. In, in, <laughs> in, uh, in Vegas. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. Or oh, where the Dolphins play, because they play in Hard Rock. Oh, yeah, Hard Rock. you're talking about the Dolphins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, who knows? Maybe Miami... You know, Miami plays with a with the Dolphins play, cause that's like what is it? I, I don't like that. I actually don't like that. Like, I don't like how in the US they share stadiums for like certain sports or like certain like for example, some arenas they give like you have like ice hockey. NBA, oh, Dallas is the same thing. Dallas, the the Stars and Mavericks. Like, NFL and like MLS, they share. But I don't like, I, I, bro. Just have your own facility, like have it, because then all the great memories that you have. You're not. Sh- it's not shared. It's yours. Like this is your home. Like, like the idea. Like I think the only time shared stadiums work is when like the San Siro, when there's history behind it. Like mm-hmm. Milan, Inter, and AC. Like if there's history like that, cool, makes sense. But even the San so Siro is gonna go away soon in a couple of years. Yeah, yeah they demolished it. It's the last year. It's the last year of the San Siro. Yeah, they demolished it. Like, it, it's so, just like, I, I, I feel bad. The last year, now that one of those teams are gonna touch that Champions League, I feel bad. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Hey. Well, well hey. I feel like it's, 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 since we're getting to the end of this segment, we got one question. Like we gotta, we gotta ask you your prediction, right? We had you around. It's almost been a year since we last had you. Uh, no, we had you on before for the World Cup. But I'm saying this time last year we had you on for uh, Madrid and Liverpool, that lame final. Now we got a real final here. No, no, no. And what did I say? That what did I say then? I said Madrid. Madrid will give them the work. The, we both agreed because we we couldn't live with Liverpool. We couldn't live with Liverpool. Oh, 100, bro. They were on for the quadruple. I could not see that happen, man. The no. quadruple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No English team has ever done that. And it, I'm glad it stays that way. <laughs> now you guys are on for the treble. Nah, yeah, we, guys, we are. Yeah. We are. Yeah, no, that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I want to ask your prediction. As as you're, you're now the, the resident R recording Men United fan. How I know you're in a lot of pain, right? It's been a week to recover for the demolishing that we, we gave y'all. Right, because I know, I know that that thirteen seconds in when Gundo scored that 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 goal, you were oh, sick. You started even, seeing how many goals even, is, is it going to be in your was head? I even in the room, I wasn't in the bro. I turned the TV on, kickoff went on. Like no, just before kickoff, I went to the kitchen to get a drink. I came back, my dad is screaming. I said, "Hey, whoa, why are you screaming?" <laughs> I look up, Gundo, and I said, "Huh? Already?" <laughs> and that I was said, a screamer oh too. Oh my <laughs> god, bro! Do you know what the, the initial fear I had? 
was, please, we cannot capitulate in a final. Please. I was scared, yeah, that, like, in 15 minutes, it's like 3-0. And I'm like, nah, bro, what the fuck is this? What the hell is this? But no, like, we came back, and then that second For, goal, From a Fugazi penalty, by the way, but hey, I'll let you continue. Hey, hey, hey. I'll let you continue. It's Fugazi, <laughs> but I'll let you go. A, a pen is a pen. A pen <laughs> is a pen at the end of the day. A pen is a penalty. But now, nah, like, Gundogan's second goal, David De Gea, man, get that brother out my club. I'm, oh, my God. But, hey, as far as this Champions League is concerned, bro, I don't care how into my land do it. I don't care how. Just please, for the love of football heritage, please do not let these oil bastards fit you. <laughs> yeah. It's going to happen. Bro, I'm telling bro, you. Man. Like, like, you know, it is the double hurts already. Like, the idea that you guys have already done the double. Because it was on y'all's head, too. It was on yeah, y'all's yeah. head, too. Oh, bro, oh my, you know, you know the issue is, you know the issue is, and this is like the best analogy. Imagine there's two briefcases. So, like, me and Ethan, and we're opposite each other, right? And there's two briefcases. One has a million dollars, one has nothing, right? And let's say, like, let's say I look at it and I know what's inside, and I say to Ethan, Oh, do you want to switch? Do you want to keep? You know that type of game show? Yeah. It's like here, yeah, the feeling that I have right now with this Man City treble or double, whatever. The feeling I have here, it's like, let's say e, let's say I, di- I had, I didn't know. Let's say Ethan, for example, he doesn't know that I have the, uh, like, he has a million dollars. I have nothing. And then he goes, you know what? Let's switch. But he gave it to me. He gave me all these luxuries. <laughs> he gave me the riches. And then he finds out that he had it all along. Bro, that's how I feel. The, the, the guilt, bro. I <laughs> After that FA Cup final, yeah, bro, I could not sleep properly. Like, it, it hurt me because it was in our hands. We had to, All we had to do was beat you guys in the final. And then, to be honest, if you guys win the Champions League, I didn't care then at that point. It's like, whatever. You, you have one, we have three. It's whatever. It's about time you had something. The fact that you've done three Premier Leagues in a row and then at the end, you've done a treble. Oh my god, bro! I am doing a social media hiatus. I am not on socials. <laughs> hey, peace out, peace out, man. Love and guidance. I'm not here. I am not here. I can't, man. I can't. Oh, just the idea, of, bro. The idea of it just kills me, man. Like in my lifetime, I'm watching a Man City trouble. No. Damn. <laughs> so uh, I'm assuming Monty, you're going I'm for you know, Milan, huh? God, I'd... bro, you're lagging, man. What's going on? Hey, man, I, I hope this is the type of lag that Man City go for. Oh, I'm, I'm like... <laughs> no, you need to stop. You need to stop. I had this bad luck with Argentina in the final where it started lagging. I was sick to my stomach. You need to stop. Don't put that juju hey, on me. Man, Don't put that hey, juju. Man. Hey, imagine Kevin De Bruyne get subbed off early again. You know, you never know, man. You never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's bad for business. I I put it like this: If we win, you're getting messages. You're gonna get voice oh, oh, memos. Oh, oh. You're lucky I don't have your oh. WhatsApp because I'll call you too. <laughs> no, no, no. It's gonna get no, nasty. No, no, it's no, gonna no, get no. nasty. No, I. You know, I, did I not say I'm off socials? No one can. Call. I'm hiding. I am not here. I'll see you in August when the season starts. I'm not here. I swear to God. You know the only time I'll jump back. You know the only time I'll jump back in social media yeah, is when Man United sign Harry Harry Kane. Then I'll be like, okay, we're, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We have a response, you know. You see when Aguero when that happened, what did we do? We signed the best strike in the league at the time, Van Persie, and we won the league. So now that Man City are about to do this treble, let's sign uh, Harry Kane. Come to Old Trafford, my guy. <laughs> I'm saying, I need that prem, man. I I can't have. You guys are gonna do four in a row. I can't let that happen. I can't like, I, like I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Would, you guys. Would you rather? Would you rather Man City do four in a row or Arsenal win it next year? Arsenal. Awesome. Awesome. What? Oh god! <laughs> what are you? What? Without what, bro? I'll go to the Emirates. I'll shake ass. I'll. Be, I'm there. What are we talking about? I don't, bro. You know, you know, the, you know the problem I had this year. Yeah, this year was like the first time I saw Arsenal in a very, bro, in a very, very long time compete for a title. So like, I don't mind Arsenal as a club. I don't mind them. Like, I, I actually don't. I don't care for them. Right. It's just their fans. I hate their fan base. I hate their fans. That's it. 
I don't, I don't mind the club. I just hate their fans. So when they were top of the league for like most of the year, bro, the way they were talking, I said, you know what? I hate City, but you know, I can't let these fans have any hope. Can't let them have any success. They just talk too much. Their players are in good form for like two months and they're like, oh, best in the world. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. So hopefully Inter Milan, I pray that they win. I'll be watching the game, obviously, as we all will. Um, but honestly, like, if Lukaku, Mkhitaryan, Damian, if these guys don't step up, yeah, these former United players, hey, man, it's going to be a long summer for me. I swear. <laughs> I'm definitely going to remove these on social media. And he's left. Yeah, so, he's left. He's left this again. But uh... he's left this again, man. But, uh, but anyway. For... For our viewers, um, if you're interested in watching the Champions League, um, this uh, this final it'll, is happening. It'll be oh. on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube. It'll we'll be, be on YouTube. So, one thing I found out, it, I don't know if you need VPN or not, but they streamed the Europa League, the Conference League on YouTube. They always do it. They always stream the final as well of all the competitions on YouTube so everyone can just watch it. So, it is available to be watched. Um, I don't know if it works in the US. If it doesn't, just get a VPN and then it should work. So enjoy yourselves. All right. You heard it here from the man, Monty, as uh, we're still waiting on Ethan to <laughs> load back in. Hey, man, I don't mind doing the rest of the show without him. Just okay. You know, nice All right. outro. Yeah, yeah. Chill. So our, Chill. Our recording with uh, Gabe and Monty. You. you can't see you. You can't see you. Bye. <laughs> Am I back? Am I back? Am I good? Still laggy. Man, gosh, man, we might need to replace I'm you. Monty good. just might need to finish off the show with me. Yeah, man, we don't, we don't, we don't need to eat from right now. In a bit, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm cooked. <laughs> cooked, <laughs> cooked. You're, you're good now. You're good now. Yeah. I'd okay, be, bet. Well, be Monty, no I'm glad you got all that hate out of your heart. You know, because Saturday is the day, man. Saturday is the day the trouble ends. I know you, you picked. Uh, enter the win, and me, of course, City engage has no choice but to pick City to win on Saturday. Oh, so no, no. <laughs> he, will, he will pick into my life because he wants you to see. He wants to see tears from me. He no, no, he'll, he'll, he's he'll, seen enough he'll, tears from me. All right, in our friendship, no. he doesn't need to see any more. No, 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 no. no, no. I, I, and I'm, I'm gonna say this: once Man City win the treble, and we finally get that Champions League this weekend. All my energy is going to be shifted towards the Dallas Cowboys. Then I could give 110% effort to See, focus it on them using whatever black magic, juju, superstition, I could force it onto them. All right. So <laughs> you just saying that now makes me want to change my pick to Milan, to enter Milan. But hey, that, that, that might be a different conversation. Well, I guess we'll see what happens on Saturday. But uh, Monty, thanks for joining, man. We really appreciate the talk. And, uh, Man, we, we got into some real football talk today. Hey, man, thanks for having me. I'm not going to lie. It's been nice uh, speaking about, especially, like, what's happening in the world of sports, you know. It's very, very fascinating. And it's nice that your viewers can, you know, once in a while get educated on football, you know. But, hey, again, thanks for having me, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, that's Monty. Go check out his podcast and go follow him on his socials. We'll link everything down in the description. Vibe with Monty. Uh, we got an episode with me, and Ethan, that we did with him a couple. Uh, I think it was episodes. like a year ago, right? Yeah, a couple episodes. Yeah, we did a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, go go support. Uh, go support our guy. And uh, thanks again, Monty. We really appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, Monty. Thank you. Appreciate it, boys. All right, so uh, we just got done talking some football with Monty. Thanks uh, again to Monty for joining. Had uh, a lot of fun talking to him about that. Uh, now let's move on and let's talk about. Probably my favorite movie of all time, and I don't think I say that lightly. Um, no, you, you don't. That it's oh. it's so good, man. But before we get into course... that, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. like and subscribe. Yeah, make sure. Yeah, we like gotta get the spools out, man. You're right. You're do right. all do all the fun stuff. We really appreciate y'all for watching this far along. I know we we talked uh, uh, soccer, football for a minute, but we only get to do this a certain many times a year. So this is one of those times. Yeah, and. If you wanted to get to it, we're going to have the timestamps and everything in the description down below. So maybe that's not for you. Um, just hop right into the rest of the episode. But now that we're onto this gauge, how good was Across the Spider-Verse, bro? Okay, and before I start, this is this is your one warning, listeners. Spoiler, Spoiler. alert. Okay, we're not obviously going to try to go in through the whole plot, but if something slips, you, you're risking that. All right, so make sure you go watch the movie. If you haven't yet, 
please just go do what close go, this go video watch go watch the video go watch the movie and then come back and finish the podcast um but god i, I mean i had super high expectations for this movie because the first one was so good i loved it and I, I just had really high expectations for the second one and man they were blown out of the water i walked out of that movie theater and i had never been so excited about seeing a movie i was like i'm ready to watch it again this was it, it was the most enjoyable i don't know two hour runtime that and i think it was two and a half two i don't know yeah it's the, it's the longest uh animated movie ever yeah it's it, it was fucking phenomenal it I'm so happy with the animation style. Obviously, we knew that was going to kick ass. The soundtrack was awesome. The story was brilliant. Um, man, uh, okay. I, I think I've said everything the I need to right to now. Detail. Yes, the attention to detail with each of the different spider man I thought the character... Like, I know we're a movie out in Nerds, and if you want to see a, a full-length review, Dill dropped a great... Was it Dill or X? Xavier, yeah. I think it was Dill, right? No, it's Xavier. X did, X did. X dropped a dope <laughs> review for it on that you can see on tiktok and on our tiktok at awr underscore podcast or our recording on on uh, instagram you can find it there dope review but just to get into it gwen stacy the the job they did on her or spider gwen was amazing because she was she was good in the second in the first movie but in the second movie it felt like she was the real main character or she was definitely had a more prominent role and yeah. i just loved her i loved her in it yeah and it it's just it, they did such a great job of bringing back some of the old uh, Spider Man from the first movie, and then introducing some of the new ones. Like I loved Spider Punk; I think he was awesome. Um, and then, yeah, just I think especially the scene where they walk into like where the, all the Spider Men are, and you've got all of them pointing at each other, and you've got all the memes and all the Easter eggs. Like you said, just the attention to detail, everything, like. You probably need to watch this movie multiple times so you can catch all of the little tidbits that are happening in the background. And um, man, I, I really could not be more excited about a movie and excited for, for a sequel too. And we should be getting it pretty soon. Um, apparently, already yeah, in the, the, working on production, we'd be getting. Uh, they're, yeah, they're already the done. Well, they they did both of these at the same time, right? Or in very close proximity of each other in creating it. I think all they have left to do, if I saw it was reported, was do a lot of the voiceovers and the voice acting, which yeah. is a big part of the movie. But I think it's supposed to come out like spring of next year, so pretty close. I think around March. Do I think it's going to come out in March? No, I don't think it's going to. Because if anything told me about this past movie is they had like three delays leading up to it. Because it was supposed to come out last year, at the beginning of last year. Then it was supposed to come out in the summertime. Then it was supposed to come out at the end of last year in December, and now it didn't come out until June. So if I had to guess, I think this one, even though it says March, I wouldn't be surprised if they delay this at least until the end of next year, which and would you be a what? bummer. But hey, take your time. Exactly. Take your time. Exactly. That's exactly where I was going with it. Is I would rather them take another year or two to make sure that they finish the story um, the way that they continued it. And I mean, if you haven't already gone and seen it again, please go watch it. Uh, in my opinion, is the best Spider-Man movie animated or live action. I don't know if that's a Ever. bold take. Ever. Yeah, it's the best Spider-Man movie. Um, so if you're into that, I think even if you're not a superhero fan, it's a fun movie for everyone. So definitely go check it out. And as far as trilogies are going, they're building a, a crazy... If they've pulled this off in the finale and it's just as great as these past two words, we're going to have a conversation of where does this rank as far as greatest trilogies in movie history. That's how good this is. And I know me and Gager are big animated movie buffs. But to say that about an animated movie, that animated movies don't get as much... Re animation in general doesn't get as much respect as I believe it deserves. This movie, like I said, if they... As far as sequels goes, this is in the top of the list of... Because y'all know how much I love sequels. I mean, Rush Hour 2 is my favorite movie ever. <laughs> anyway, this movie isn't in Rush Hour 2 tier. I think as far as sequels go, we're talking about Lord of the Rings... Uh, Twin t uh, A Tale of Two Towers, uh, Planet of the Apes, or Rise of the uh, a Planet, of, or what is it, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is the second one. Yeah. And then Dylan can make a little edit if I'm wrong, which is most likely. We're talking about Empire Strikes Back level of of sequel tierness, how good it is. Yeah. If you it haven't is... seen it, go check it out. I loved it, bro. So Spider-Punk yeah. was your favorite um, Spider-Man? Yeah, I think of the new edition, Spider-Punk was probably my favorite. What, what about you, man? 
Me too. But I love what's it? Uh, a Spider, Spider Man India or Spider India? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was, was great. He had my favorite yeah. web, like the the yo yo. Or yeah. I know it's not a yo yo. It probably has a more. But I thought that was so sick. I thought the animation tower, uh, animation style of um, uh, what is it? Mumbai Hatton was amazing. Yeah. Probably my my favorite world that we were in. Um, the whole spider society scene was amazing. Like I said, Gwen was so good in hey, this one. The she the canon so events good. too, like the the whole like idea of the canon events that like all of the Spider Men have to go through, like the similar like struggles of losing someone. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was just perfectly executed, and um, I'm just really and excited. Even the Spider Men that we got, we, we we got the animated Spider Man, like the Easter eggs too. We got the animated Spider Man. We got the time the T Rex Spider Man. PlayStation Spider Man. We even got Donald Glover as the Prowler in oh. the movie. <laughs> I was flipping out in the. It makes me theater. want to see. <laughs> you know what my big theory is? Before we get off of this, Let's I think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get the live action Spider Man and Beyond the Spider Verse. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. It's already the confirmed. announcement we're... of who it's gonna be because they already said this is the last animated Spider Miles Morales at least. Spider Verse movie they're gonna do this is the end with the third one I think at the end after they've defeated the spot spot what a great villain he's turning yeah, out I really hope true. they they really they gotta close at home though um if the finale's trash I'm gonna be upset but I think I think at the end of the third one we get the the look of who's gonna be the the at least the MCU Miles Morales. Yeah, Cause I know we've gotten teased it a bunch of times in the first Homecoming because we saw Childish Gambino in there and he talked about his nephew, which is obviously Miles in the, oh, Miles. In the show or in the in the movie. I think we're getting teased it a lot because I I definitely feel like as far as the next Tom Holland set of movie we get for Spider Man, we're gonna get Miles in there. But I feel like we got to we gotta get a sneak peek of who's it gonna be. Yeah. For sure. And hopefully the MCU doesn't screw up the Miles Morales story because I feel like this is going to be so hard to beat this this Spider-Verse trilogy. Um, I'm just really happy with what they did there. Now we could talk about something else uh, before we finish the show because um, we've got put you on, but we'll face, we'll save that for the final segment of the show. I want to talk about, I know we talked about football a lot, but this, this, this is a kind of there's an overlap here uh this involves Overlaps. a basketball player yeah yeah there's this involves a basketball player but it involves it also involves a adult film star um if you haven't been keeping up my with favorite type of topics yeah yeah or, or, you know when the two worlds collide I, I just think that's it's beautiful um maybe not a beautiful situation for zion williamson but <laughs> funny for us because uh, we get to talk about it and uh if you weren't on twitter basically a adult film actress mariah mills called out zion and has a took a bunch of screenshots has all of the proof basically that they were messing around uh unprotected no jimmy apparently he went raw <laughs> he was going raw he was finishing he was in her nasty, i mean crazy nasty, shit nasty, dude nasty nasty, nasty <laughs> filming stuff, it bro. But uh, what's, and what's might... it gonna take? What's it gonna take for these ball players to stop, stop sleeping with these, these? Oh my okay, god! Okay. These, these hootie patooties. They gotta stop sleeping with these hootie patooties. <laughs> okay, so th this is the thing: is wh whatever your take is on sleeping with an adult film actress when you're a famous basketball player, whatever you know what you do, you man. The pro, or I mean, I guess the reason why this is such a prevalent story is because just a couple of days before this, uh, Zion and his girlfriend had come out and uh, announced that they were having a daughter together. So this kind of muddied the waters for Zion, and people were wondering too, like why? Why is it taking him so long to come back? We know exactly why now. He's been, yeah. he's been getting to work. <laughs> He's got to do that cardio somehow. <laughs> He's got to do that cardio somehow. He's hey, been doing a lot of cardio. Hey, Mariah apparently. Mills did say she was trying to help him lose weight. I guess that was, you know, the workout. That Just... was her way of helping. <laughs> if if anything, the Pelicans need to bring Mariah Mills on on a contract to help with Zion, because yeah, apparently she was doing good work in the off season, right? And he first had to workout mess it up. pelvic thrusts. <laughs> <laughs> 
but it's the same because I have no problem if you if you want to mess with these adult film stars, cool. If I had a lot of money, I would be doing the exact same thing. But you gotta. How many times have we heard the stories of these balls? But would players? you really though? Hold on. Would would you really? It's, if you had all that money, you would. Yeah, but I do it. Like he was doing such a great job, but you can't like. It goes into the age old story of like you just gotta manage your roster. Like, and he was doing a terrible job, and he messed it up by putting a baby in one of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, who knows? They might have a happy family. I don't know these people. They don't know us, right? But come on, bro. It looks it looks insane. You because both of them are porn stars or adult. Uh, Dylan's gonna have to believe it out. But both of them are, both of them are adult film stars. Uh, is, so so like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. So obviously Mariah Mills is, but is his girlfriend also? Well, we don't know if they're girlfriend. His baby mother. Or I guess his baby mama. The yeah. mother of his, of his soon-to-be a child is like a, is an OnlyFans girl too, as well as being a bottle girl. Gotcha. So, okay, so where do we draw that line between of like, she's an adult film actress and she's an OnlyFans model? Is there a difference? There is a difference. I think we can, we very much saw the difference. We very much saw the difference. <laughs> Because there's a video of, allegedly a video of his baby mom beating somebody up. And then we had a, uh, then we have tweets talking about Mariah Mills is scared for her safety from the alleged baby mom's, uh, no, the baby mom's family from threatening her. So <laughs> th that, that's, that's the difference right there. That's the difference right there. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I guess just to play hype or just to play a game, um, who do you think is in deeper shit right now, John Morant or Zion Williamson? I don't know, but all I know is that 2019 draft is absolutely cooked, absolutely <laughs> cooked. You got you got Ja playing with guns, Zion playing with, with adult film stars. R.J. Barrett R stinks. Relax, that's my guy. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> I, that's know, I, I, was just, I was just saying that to get a reaction out of you. See what... <laughs> that, that 2019 draft class is so cooked, is unbelievable. Oh, it's fucking hilarious, man. I, I mean, did you <laughs> think that this would happen? I mean, like, I I just didn't see a world where all three of those guys would pan out the way they have. And I mean, Jaw's been really good. We, we we can't take that away from him, but like Zion has been good when he's really good when, when he's, he's healthy. There. Yeah, exactly. But when he's either injured or busy banging adult film stars, I mean, you know, who who knows where the rest of his career career trajectory will take him. Um they're they're gonna do a 30 for 30 on this draft class for sure. And they might do it before we hit 30 years. Like they're gonna do one. <laughs> Facts. They'll, the, they'll do 30 for 30 on this draft class before they even hit 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh man. So no. that, that that's just crazy though. Like and to think about it, RJ's in the best position out of all of them. You'd never think. You never think. I know, I know certain friends of ours, they're their agenda's in hell. Their agenda's in hell. <laughs> so you you think uh, teams are going to be more likely to sign R.J. Barrett now than uh, Zion or Ja? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Look at my guy, man. You got to worry about guns, and you don't got to worry about him him messing with adult film stars. He's cooking with something. He's cooking with something right now. Yeah. Uh, Zion, congratulations. You have been named our uh, Menace of the Week. I don't know if that's a <laughs> that's a segment no, that no, no, has prepped, no, no, but... no, 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 no. This is what we're gonna do. Hey, it's time to bring back Meat Watch. Mariah Mills, you're on Meat Watch. Oh, Mariah <laughs> Mills is on Meat Watch, man. We got our Meat Watch. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I guess that's kind of fitting for her profession. I, I don't know. She um, is a professional Meat Watcher. Professional so. Meat Well Watcher. Gouger. I don't know what. <laughs> Gouger is insane. Gouger is insane. <laughs> Yeah, sorry just... <laughs> moving on we gotta <laughs> i i think you kind of knew what i was going with for there um all right so we're hitting the end of the show and it's time for our favorite segment let us put you on and i'll start this week um because what day is today today is june the 8th yeah on thursday eight. so music will be coming out tonight but a single just drop and because we got our boy monty from the uk here i'm gonna have I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna play some J Huss man, some J Huss UK rapper. A new album out. Been waiting forever for his last project, but his new project gonna be out tonight. Um, and he's got a song that just dropped with Drake called "Who Told You." Vibes for the summertime. This is gonna be the top of my playlist. 
think about ooh the vibes, the Caribbean vibes. That that's what you're gonna get. That's what you're gonna get. Island vibes. That's what the song is. Who told you? J Huston featuring Drake. Check it out. Gage, what you got for music? I like it. Um, I am gonna go with something that they added to Apple Music for like a week and then deleted it, and now I had to del- I had to add it back on my own. Um, but if you have Spotify, you can listen to it. It's a Spotify exclusive. Uh, Denzel Curry dropped a uh, live at Electric Lady um, LP. It's some of the songs that he did from his Melt My Eyes EP, plus a couple original pieces that he has. Um, and they're all like kind of jazzy instrumentals. It's it's really cool and uh, just goes to kind of show the um, just like the different sounds that Denzel can put himself on. And yeah, if you if you're interested, go check it out on Spotify. And if not, you're, you're kind of shit out of luck you can't get it on apple music so <laughs> but Facts. um Facts. Right. Oh, also shout out to metro boomin and into the spider across the spider verse album or soundtrack i thought yeah, that was dope for too. sure yeah didn't mention that um <clears throat> got to talk about the idol too the weekend dropping um another i guess soundtrack for his show on hbo um which is actually going to be my uh my show for put you on this week uh the weekend show it's uh the first episode is kind of weird um but yeah you guys you guys know how much i love abel and uh the music is really good too so uh, i guess i'll make that a two and one the idol soundtrack and the show go check them out um and as far as shows are gonna go for me i know we talked about succession last week um I have to go with we, we, you. Re, you already did last week. You talk about. I think you should leave the third season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Did you watch the third season? I already watched it. Yeah, I watched. Oh, it. you it just great. watched the third season? Okay, good. I'm. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, which show am I gonna pick? I guess my put you on for the week is it's a cheat code. I'm doing across the spider verse. I hey. cheated. I got my way out of it. I, I across the spider verse cheat code. Um, yeah, great movie. We talked about the segment already. Great, one of the greatest animated movies ever. One of the greatest movies. I think it's going to age really well. And yeah, that's my pick for this week. All right. Anything hey. else you got this week to talk about? Um, Just some quick final thoughts before we close out the show on the Madden cover. Josh Allen was announced as the cover athlete. What do you think? Uh, it should have been DeMar Hamlin. Mm. Nah, I'm just kidding. It shouldn't have been DeMar Hamlin. You can't I think put it should have been Tyreek Hill. Hey, don't, 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 put that, don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby. That's that's what DeMar Hamlin's saying with the Madden curse. Man. Don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. <laughs> That, I think it's. I, I get the sentiment. I th- I get this. I get the the sentiment of picking um Demar Hamlin, and I wouldn't have been against it, you know. And I think I don't think Josh Allen would have been against it too, but um I would have opted for Tyree Kill as a Tyree Kill fanboy. Kill. I would have loved to see. On the well, cover. I'm feeling kind of robbed because as a Packers fan. We never got an Aaron Rodgers on the Madden cover, no, it but it's okay. Have, but it's okay. No, you have ever. I'll just wait a couple years and we'll get Jordan Love on it. That's a good enough consolation prize. Jordan what? Love, future for MVP. What cover? The cover. The cover. What? The cover. What? Arena Football Pro for the, the PlayStation yeah, Six. Yeah, he's not. Jordan Love will be on the cover of Arena Football. He's not gonna be on the cover of no Madden. Hey, Check hey. Check that out. Well, it's not gonna be any, any Cowboys anytime soon. So say what you want. It's gonna be the whole team. It's gonna be a whole roster photo like this next year. <laughs> <laughs> when we win the chip, uh, y'all, y'all, y'all tired of me. What? Okay, man. wait, wait. They can use pictures of the team at Cancun for the Madden cover? Yeah, us with Cancun with a trophy. Oh, yeah. I don't like think this. that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Like, everybody passing around. Hey! Hey, maybe for Manchester sure City? Maybe the... maybe you're, maybe no, your for sure will be Manchester in the City. form of Manchester City, but I don't think that'll happen for the Cowboys. But... Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, thank you guys for um, you know watching and just give us that like, give us that subscribe. It really helps the channel. And um, make sure you share with someone. Um, share it with a friend. Share it with a lover. Share it with a lover's dog. Share it with that dog's groomer. There you go. And I think that's where <laughs> I think that's where the chain will, will will keep getting us to where we want to go. Thank you guys for watching. It's the young Rottweiler, Ethan Hamilton. I think I did the bark. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, cool. Uh I'm Gage Sutton 007. Thank y'all for watching our recording and we'll see y'all next week.